in this lesson, we want to talk about combinations and permutations. All right, so when we get to this section, a lot of students are going to have difficulty determining whether to use our formula for permutations or whether to use our formula for combinations. Basically, we're going to start out with one here where we say that there are 20 applicants for three jobs, a JavaScript developer, a data scientist, and a UI engineer. Well, basically, the way that you decide here, you're going to be selecting three people out of the 20. So if you have the number of ways of selecting R items out of N items, in this case, it's three out of 20, and repetition is not allowed because the same person can't get the JavaScript developer job, the data scientist job, and the UI engineer job. It's got to be three separate people. Well, you want to consider the fact that if the order is important, you want to use a permutation. If the order is not important, okay, you want to use a combination. So here the order is very important to us because it's a different result if I get a job as a JavaScript developer versus if I get a job as a data scientist, okay? So because the order is important, we want to use our formula for permutations, and that's a real easy formula. It's going to be P like this, and then I'm going to put some parentheses. It's going to be N comma R, okay? The N here is going to be the 20. The R here is going to be the 3. We'll fill that in in a minute. This equals, you've got your N factorial over, you've got your N minus R factorial. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have P, and we would say 20 pick 3. Okay, that's how you can read that if you want. And this is going to be equal to 20 factorial over, and I made that a little bit long, so let's fix that. So 20 factorial over, in this case, you'd have 20 minus 3 or 17 factorial, okay? If you want to simplify this, you can. Of course, this key is on your calculator if you're using a TI-83 or 84 or whatever the version is you're using. But let's just go through this one. In the future ones, I'm just going to punch it into the calculator and make it a lot quicker. Let's move this up here. This would be what? It would be 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, you know, so on and so forth. But this part here, because the 17 factorial is going to keep going down to 1, you can get rid of that part and just erase this and say it's 20 times 19 times 18, which is going to be what? Well, 20 times 19 is 380, then times 18 is going to be 6,840. All right, let's look at the next one. So we have the senior class at Denton High School, which contains 60 students, wishes to elect a president, vice president, and secretary. So we're choosing three students out of the 60 for these three positions. The order is going to matter here, right? If someone gets selected as a president, it's a different result as if they got selected as a secretary. So in other words, let's say that John got picked to be the president. And let's say Larry got picked to be the vice president, for example. And let's say that Steve, okay, Steve got picked to be the secretary. Well, if I switch things up, I could have the same three students, okay, but they got different positions. That's a completely different result, okay? So in this case, we want to use a permutation, and we remember the formula for that. So I'm just going to type this into my calculator. I'm going to do 60, okay, 60, and then you're going to have that key that says N pick R. So it looks like this, a lowercase N, an uppercase P, and a lowercase R. But I'm going to hit 60, this key right here, and then three, right? Because there's going to be three students selected, president, vice president, and secretary. And if you run that calculation, you're going to get 205,320. So 205,320. And again, if you want to use the proper notation there, you've got this P, and then you've got the first number, that's 60, and then comma, three. Okay, so this is what this is equal to. Again, if you go on your calculator, it's the N P R key. Okay, let's look at another example. So we have the junior class at Bracken High School consists of 250 students. They need to elect two representatives for the student council. Okay, well, this is a little bit similar to the last question, but we're going to end up using a different formula here because now the order doesn't matter anymore. Okay, repetition still not allowed, but the order doesn't matter anymore because let's say John gets the first representative position and Steve gets the second one. Well, it doesn't matter if we reverse that and Steve got chosen first and then John did because they're both going to just be representatives. Okay, so the order doesn't matter here. So we want to use the formula for combinations. And we learned this in the last lesson when we talked about the binomial theorem, right? So we have this formula. It's n choose r, 
So we have this C and then N comma R here. And this equals your N factorial over your N minus R factorial and then times your R factorial. Okay, so what ends up happening is we're dividing out the duplicates with this extra part here. Okay, this is all you have to remember because if you've got this part down from the permutations formula, you're just throwing that extra little bit there in the denominator to divide out the duplicates, and that's how you get your combination formula. Okay, so let's erase this real quick. Let's actually plug in the numbers. I'm going to again use my calculator here because you would basically be doing this C here with 250 comma 2. And I'm not going to set this up. You're just going to hit 250 and then go to NCR. And I'm going to get a result of 31,125. Okay, let's look at another example. So a local high school is having a marathon qualifier. There will be a total of 40 runners that will participate. The first eight people to finish the race will advance to the state championship. Okay, so do I want a permutation or a combination? Does the order matter here? We know that repetition is not allowed. Right? Because if I'm in the first position, I can't also be in the third position. But does the order matter? Well, no, not for our result because it just says the first eight people. So it doesn't matter if I finished first or seventh. Okay, As long as I'm in that top eight, okay, I'm going to advance to the state championship. So we would use a combination here. And again, I would just do C and then I'm going to put 40 comma 8. Again, just punch this into your calculator. You're going to do 40, choose 8. And that gives us a pretty big number. It's going to be 76 million, and then you're going to have 904,685. All right, let's just look at one more. So the state championship marathon consists of 40 runners. The top three runners will earn gold, silver, and bronze medals. So can we have repetition here? No, right? Because if I finished first, I can't also finish second or third, okay? And then does the order matter? Well, yeah, it definitely matters, right? If I finish in first place, that's a different result than if I finish in second place. In one case, I'm getting gold. In the other case, I'm getting silver. So the order does matter. So I want to use the permutations formula. So I would just use my calculator or again, you've got this P with this 40 comma 3, if you want to say it's equal to. You can punch this in on your calculator, or again, you can use your little formula. I just think it's easier to punch it in on a calculator because a lot of these, the numbers are just going to be astronomically big. So if we go ahead and punch up 40, and then you do your NPR key, and then 3, you're going to get 59,280 as a result. 